Okay, in this video we're checking out the OWL RX diversity receiver module for your fat air goggles. This is from OWL RC. You can see here I have it installed and I have a little TP printed cover here for my Dominator V3s. And before we get into the video, um, you're going to see a lot of comments about the way I have my antennas on here. I have these two uh, Fox here Lollipop stubby antennas at right angles. And I generally fly like this for most uh, situations because I fly pretty close usually. Obviously, um, if I'm going to fly far away, I'll replace this one here on the bottom with a patch antenna and direct it to the, where I'm flying away from me. But if I'm generally flying around myself, this is the way I configure my goggles and I get perfectly fine reception this way. You're going to see a lot of comments about like, oh, you're not flying with a patch antenna. It's not needed if you're flying close to yourself. So just keep that in mind. This is why I feel like this. Now I got that out of the way because you're going to see a lot of comments about that. Um, I've been uh, flying with these modules for several months now, about three months now, I think. I switched from the, uh, this is the Yixin Pro 58 module, pretty inexpensive budget module. Uh, I think it runs like $25. Plus then you can do the Achilles um, firmware mod, which you have to pay for, I believe now it's like $10 or $15. And so you have to, it's a DIY sort of situation. This one here actually came pre, um, uh, pre-flashed and it was sent to me directly by Achilles uh, so we're roughly talking about like a $35, $40 module here and before that I was flying the Real ACC module uh, which ones are about $50 to $60 and in terms of uh, differences in like okay what's better this is a very difficult question to answer and, and show in terms of uh, quality differences in the footage that you're going to see, or actually the video you're going to see in the goggles, versus the footage that's portrayed by the DVR from the goggles. And what I mean by that is, I actually looked at DVR footage of, um, well not the real ACC, I didn't actually do that, I, what I was using previously, the Yixin Pro 58 module and the OWL RX, and in, in similar situations with the same craft, and I really didn't notice a whole lot of difference in terms of the DVR footage. It seemed pretty similar uh, because obviously it's, it's going to be mostly based on the quality of the antennas you use and the video transmitter that you're using. But if you're using the same stuff, same antennas and same video transmitter and same antenna on your craft, then you can compare the modules directly. So I actually decided to fly this for a consistently for several months. And I had this in another uh, goggles and w was looking at the DVR footage. And I was like, well, there's not much a lot of difference, but I sensed that this one seemed better to me. So uh, uh, it's hard to explain. So first, I did do two firmware updates on this since I got this. It's um, uh, that's a nice that's one of the nice things about the OWLRX is that the firmware updates do seem to come regularly and they do have improvements each time. So if you're looking for a company that's going to support your module, then yeah, I think that that this company definitely does support this and in my opinion the the video that I'm seeing in the goggles myself seems better in very specific situations and those situations are situations where there's going to be a lot of multi-path interference so you're flying inside a building a lot of walls where you have a lot of reflections in your signal uh, this module seems to be better than the Pro 50 in terms of reception in that regard and in the way that the breakups look in the video feed. So, and the Pro 58, when I, so what I did was, I, like I said, I flew this for about three months, then I went back and I, I flew this again and I noticed a difference in the way the, the video breakup looks. And it, don't, you, it, you can't, it doesn't show up in the DVR at all, so there's, there's no real way that I can show you this. Now, I think that Bardwell did some uh, goggle re receiver comparisons and he actually had a GoPro pointing at inside his goggles and he had like side by sides like well for one thing I don't have a GoPro Hero whatever 7 and he's got like two of them whatever so and I'm and he's got like multiple fast track goggles which I don't have so there was no way for me to realistically duplicate that sort of a test so all you have to do basically you have to rely on, on, on what I'm telling you and in terms of the breakup it did seem like it was uh, easier to, to see what was going on. So you would have breakups on the on these older modules here where it would be, you know, uh, be a lot of static and it would be like kind of big flashes on the screen. 
Whereas on the LRX, it would be more like lines on the screen. You can still see kind of where you're going. Now, what's interesting is that I hadn't really noticed that before when I was flying the Pro 58. And it was, it's kind of one of the reasons why I don't really do these receiver module reviews is because um, I didn't really think that there was going to be much of a benefit to going to a more expensive module from, say, a cheaper one because I felt like I could fly just fine with the cheaper module and I think that's because you know the brain sort of compensates for what you don't see and you get trained to fly through the breakups with the interference and I think that's why I felt like I didn't need to upgrade it's because I felt like I could fly just fine given the fact that the, the uh, interference wasn't so debilitating where I couldn't see at all but I could still fly but then once I moved to a more expensive module here um, I felt like the breakups were better, and then when I went back, I realized there is a difference between the way the breakups occur in that situation. So, yeah, it's very hard to explain, and you can, you only know if you actually fly each of these for several months and then go back and forth, and then you can then see what the subtle difference is. A very subtle difference. So we're, we're dealing with basically price differences here. So maybe like, you know, forty bucks for this one. 55, 60 bucks for this one, and then uh, the LRX is going to run you, you know, 80 to 95 dollars depending on what promotions are going on, etc. And then of course, you know, there's the more expensive ones. I have this new one here, this Furious FPV. I forget what this one's called. This is the, the newest one. It's called the X or something like that. So let me see what this looks like. Yeah, the True DX. So I just got this. I'm gonna install this and fly this and see if I see another difference because this one is like hundred and twenty dollars and this one's like you know between 85 80 85 and like 95 95 dollars it's like you know 30 40 dollars cheaper than the true true DX so let's see if there's even that much of a difference between the two and then of course the I guess what everyone's calling the gold standard the rapid fire uh, which I don't have and I don't plan on getting because again I'm, I'm still in that kind of sort of situation where I feel like this is good enough for what I need to do. Granted, it may very well be that if I switch this out for rapid fire, I may like say, oh, the rapid fire is actually better. Of course, you know, you're paying $60 more for the rapid fire versus this one. And at that point, is it really worth it? That I don't know. I don't, I can't answer that because I don't have the rapid fire. But again, you know, I think it's it kind of comes down to uh, what what kind of environments you fly in, whether or not you feel you can fly through those environments with the module you have. And I think that as you do increase in price, you do get slightly better performance. It's not like night and day performance. But I think your your brain and your eyes can be trained to get accustomed to whatever breakups you are getting. So it may or may not be that you necessarily need the $150 rapid fire, but you know, again, uh, you know, it's every everyone's situation is going to be a little bit different. So, anyway, so let me get all this stuff out of the way in terms of the different modules and the costs and whether or not there's pros and cons for you. It's going to be very subjective, but I just want to show you the this module here and the features and things I like about it. I really like the OSD. There's a built-in OSD you can see in the goggles that corresponds to what's on the screen here. So go ahead and turn this guy on and I'll start recording the OSD as well. Okay, so there's the module turning on and I'm gonna go ahead and turn on my DVR. And I don't think the camera will focus here, but if I, as I press the button here, the OSD should turn on. There we go. And that'll actually get recorded in the, the, uh, the DVR footage. So let me just run through here. So you have basically a left and a right button and a menu button. And if you press here, this will turn off the favorites. I'm in this favorites section, but if you long press the menu button, it'll bring up the different uh, options here. You have channel, frequency, favorites, band scan, finder, and settings, and I'll just to show you the settings here really quick. So here are all these things around like diversity, uh, the insane mode, RSSI is currently off. I can turn that on and off. So I'm gonna actually turn that on right now. And I, 
I forget what these letters has to do with like where the, it's positioned on the screen. And then you have fast switching. I currently have that turned off. I should turn that back on. And you have these different uh, options. You have like low band. So these I have turned off because those are like uh, bands that aren't really used. Like I guess they're kind of illegal in the United States. I'm gonna exit. But the main, the actually the the main two functions I use are channel and uh, favorites. And so I put a bunch of things in my favorites here. So let's go in here. And these are just different bands and channels that I use pretty frequently. I have a little heart there next to them. So like E8, R2, R6. These are just different ones that I typically, if you want to switch very quickly, you can use this. And uh, if we go to channels, let's go back to channel. Here we can then change our channel by just pressing up and down. So five, back to four, go down here, four, three, two, etc. And so if I want to put, uh, say, I think Fast Track One is in my favorites, but if I want to put uh, another one into my favorites, I think they're currently all full. So if I want to favorite F8, and see it says full there. If I try to hit the center button and favorite that, because I have, I think it's a maximum of eight in there. But this is what I typically use. And if you, I think if you long press, if you long press the right and left, that'll change the band. So if you long press, I'll go from R8, H8, A8, B8, E, and we're back to F. So I think there's uh, six bands total. And then some of the other modes. So you can go to channel. You can do frequency where you can actually change the frequency one by one. So you say it's a 5834, 5835. Etc. If you want to, if you if you want to use an actual specific frequency number, if it if, if like say your video transmitter is a little bit off or drifting, for example, you may find that it's not actually on a known band and channel. So you can use this. I don't uh, you don't usually use this mode very often. And next mode is favorites. Then there's band scanner. So you can go scan the, the R band. I'll show you what's actually transmitting on that band. You go to the next one. And so you just press the right button here and you can go to the next one. And I'll scan each of the channels in that band one by one. Actually, I don't have anything transmitting right now. I think that's just background interference there. But it can show you, like, if you're at, an, if you're at a, at a location and you want to see what kind of, like, interference is going on there. And you see here that up in the upper side of the band, there's probably this Wi-Fi interference from just like the houses around where I live. Uh, so you probably want to use a lower band, uh, or a channel in the lower in the band here, where there's less interference. You're not going to get something like this showing up in your feed. So that's what this would be pretty useful for. And of course, then we have your typical finder mode here. Um, I think, let's see here. in here. Okay, so I'm on the, uh, I just tuned it over to uh, Fat Shark 6 here. I think that's where I have, there's some uh, interference or some, some things transmitting in, around this band. So you have a little bit of signal here, but then you can put a patch antenna on the one on the bottom here and then use that to locate your quad if it's uh, lost somewhere in like trees or bushes or whatever. And then you can use a directional, I'll put a, a directional antenna or patch antenna on this side and then it'll give you a stronger signal as you turn it away. Um, or uh, rotate this away or towards wherever your quad is transmitting from. So this is a, this is pretty typical. On a, it's on a lot of goggles right now. Okay, so we're back to settings, and that's pretty much it. Um, and you, uh, you'll see the, oh, the OSD here. I put that in the corner um, as I was going through the rest of these. But that's that's pretty much it for the receiver and its features. I definitely I like this one a lot. I think it's going to take quite a bit for me to switch to the true. Um, True DX, we'll see. I'm going to give that a try, and that'll be in a video probably in a couple months from now. So, if you're really curious about that, I'm going to give that a fair shake, uh, really try that out, and I'll give you my findings and whether or not it's worth it to get that or the LRX in a future video. So, hopefully, you found this video helpful. And let me know if you have any questions, and I'll talk to you guys in the next one.